Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to show you a dual amp setup that can be expanded upon to give you three different tones that can be seamlessly switched between on the FM9 or the Axe FX3. To get started, I'm going to show you the dual amp setup that I've got at the moment. I'm using the AC20 12A7 treble. You can see it across this row right here, going into uh, my favorite IR, one that I captured myself, LTTV Mix 7. This one is available for free on Exchange, and just a bit of the London plate reverb. The other amp that I'm using that I will switch over to in here is the USA Lead mid gain. Just very quickly take note that I've set the bypass mode to mute on each of these so that when I swap between them, signal is not going to be coming through this shunt down here. We'll just have the AC20 and then the USA lead mid gain when I change scenes. Let's check it out. <laughs> just going to be using a dual amp setup, I could actually place these two amps in series with the bypass mode set to through and just turn one on while I turn the other off. I'm pretty used to doing it in this way where they're connected in parallel, but it's just easier on like a visual level to see what's happening for me. But again, it comes down to personal preference. So we have those two contrasting amp tones and we can switch seamlessly between them. Now, of course, the amp block has four channels. So I could actually set up a preset with eight different independent amp sounds on here. But what I'd like on top of this, you know, I've got the AC20 kind of doing a chimey thing and the USA lead mid gain for all the gain. I'd like a pristine crystal clean sound and we can do that without having to use an amp block. If you've seen my video talking about a Rockman style clean sound, we're actually going to borrow that technique and use it in here. So let's add a pristine clean sound to this particular preset. I'll also note as well on the FM9, you can see with two amps in here, the CPU is around 26%. If I was to get rid of this particular block here and delete it, I mean, the CPU usage barely goes down. It goes to what? 25.7% or something. So you can pretty much run dual amps in any preset without having to sacrifice CPU usage. You can also run two delays and two reverbs, which is awesome. I talk about that a little bit more on my channel with the very first video that I did with the FM9. I love that feature about it. Basically, you can use dual amps wherever you like without having to worry about CPU usage. So let's do this. Let's come up here. We're gonna use a direct style sound in here. So I'm actually not even gonna worry about having a cab sound on here. There's just two elements to this clean sound. One is a compressor. So I'm gonna place a compressor on the grid up here, again, in a parallel row. Uh, this is the stock Studio Feedforward compressor with the ratio at six. I've just turned the level down a little bit over here. The other thing that we wanna do is add a filter block that can cut some low end and boost some high end. The reason we wanna cut the low end is so that we don't kinda of overload the input to the compressor and essentially cross the threshold into compression too early. And I wanna add some high end for some sparkle. So we're gonna add a filter block in here. Let's go with filter. And I'm using a tilt style EQ, so like a combination between a high and a low shelf. I've set the gain to 9 dB here, so it's cutting a bunch of low end and boosting a bunch of high end, which is what we wanted. I've got the frequency at 1600 Hertz. Feel free to tweak this frequency to taste somewhere between say, seven, 800 Hertz and maybe 2K. And then I'm just simply gonna cable this up over here. Now, I don't wanna hear this pristine clean sound on scene two or scene three. I've made sure that I've set the filter block bypass mode to mute and I'm just gonna bypass it over here, which is what I want. Now, I'm gonna to go to scene one where I want these two blocks engaged. My other two amp sounds are bypass and I have this gorgeous sparkly clean sound. <laughs> So 
almost like having an acoustic sound on there. The great thing about this is now I can seamlessly switch from this pristine clean to my chimey sound to my big chunky sound. Let's do that. <laughs> So I have three unique sounds, seamless switching between them. And this kind of clean thing, I actually use live most of the time for my clean sound because it is so compressed and it's so forgiving. Really, really nice and sparkly, so it kind of juts out in a mix, but I don't have to be too concerned with any inaccuracies in my technique. I just have loads of compression on there and it always kind of pops in the mix. Now, it would be nice to kind of add to this. You can see the CPU's at 34%. So let's add a delay to this preset because delay is always a good thing in my opinion. And let's add a chorus for the super clean sound. So I'm using the dimension one type. You can see the rates at 0.6-ish hertz, depth turned down. I've got auto depth off on here. If you just want to leave it at the stock settings. I think the stock dimension one type is pretty great. Let's have a listen now to the clean sound with chorus and delay. Then I'll switch over to the AC20. We might add just a few other little things in here. The CPU there is hovering at around 40%, so we've got plenty of scope to add more effects in here. One thing that I kind of like doing is adding another reverb in here and using it just for the clean sound, like a really big, lush kind of reverb. So let's do this. Let's leave this London Plate style reverb on everything. I think it's a great all-rounder reverb. I'll move the chorus and the delay slightly further down the grid, and this might not be a super traditional way of routing reverb, chorus, and delay, but I'm just gonna add the reverb on its own part of the grid over here in parallel. So it'll be reverb into chorus and delay into reverb. Why not? You know, sometimes it's fun to experiment with these kind of things. I'm gonna go with, uh, not the Ursa Major, but let's go with one of my favorite reverbs in here, the Rich Hall, which I've got over here. See, so mix it around 40%, otherwise stock settings on here. This is cool because I can go from having my super sparkly clean sound with a big reverb into my chimey sound, which doesn't have the big reverb on it, but I will still get reverb tails because I'm leaving this one on. Follow me, let's have a listen to it. <laughs> I could even add another sound to all of that by making use of control switches on this USA lead mid gain. I have a control switch that I could add, say, to the input boost. Let's go with control switch number one. I'm going to attach it to the fat switch as well over here. So let's go control switch one. So when I hit that control switch on, it will give me a boost and it's going to hit that fat switch on and really kind of make the mids bloom. I'm going to go to controllers over here. We'll go to control switch per scene and I'll just turn it on for scene four. If I save this, and now I go to scene four, which I've conveniently called cheese, I've got a chorus, I've got a delay, I've got my amp with the input boost and fat switch on. And I'm gonna play you all out with this glorious lead sound. So using that filter and compressor trick and the fact that we can run dual amps in any preset on the FM9 without really impacting the CPU is a great trick and a great way to get three 
sounds that you can seamlessly switch between on any FM9 preset. This will, of course, work with the Axe FX3 as well. If you wanted a super clean sound and another sound, it will work fine on the FM3 as well. If you've got any other questions, let me know in the comment section below. I will upload this preset to Axe as soon as I can and have a great time. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you.